All right, so I was a little disappointed. I couldn't find a video on on how this works on YouTube on the first page when I Googled it. So um, here's how to use a digital pin as kind of like an analog pin. Um, for those who are impatient, this is the code. This is how it's hooked up. Um, it might be in the description if I can figure out how to save it and share it. Otherwise, it's good practice to type your own code. Um, Here's how it's hooked up. We got five volts going through a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor. Uh, normally you'd hook up, you know, five volts in ground, and then the middle one would be the voltage you're reading on your analog pin. In this case, we're using this to charge a capacitor, and we're using the variable resistance to charge it faster or slower. And then we're using a digital pin to see how long it takes for it to go from low to high. So just real quick for the impatient, this is the simulation. So as we adjust the resistance, it charges faster because it's less resistance, or it charges slower because it's more resistance. And then on here we can print out all the way from 100 all the way to zero. Okay, so let's get into what's actually happening for those of you who want to know more. So normally you'll have your five volts on one side, your ground on the other side, and then the center tap of your potentiometer will read that voltage. Um, how a potentiometer works is it's some resistance uh, from this side to that side, and the center tap is going to connect somewhere between them. Not necessarily in the center, it could be in the center, but you can slide this around so you can get a fraction of the resistance above and a fraction of the resistance below or the rest of the resistance below. So if I move this center tap, for example, up, then I get a higher voltage. If I move it down, see it's going down, I get a lower voltage because I have more voltage dropping across the resistor when it's lower down here. So instead of doing it like that, we're going to take advantage of the fact that from the middle one to one of the sides, we have a variable resistance. So. So this is what we're going to do instead. We have our five volts going through a resistor into a capacitor. A resistor is going to resist the flow of electrons and a capacitor is going to charge up based on how many electrons you give it. So by adjusting this uh, resistance, we can adjust how quickly this capacitance is charging. So let me go ahead and put a switch in here and then a little clock so it does it automatically. This capacitor is now uh, being discharged and then it's charging up through that resistor. If we increase this resistance, then its charge time is going to increase. Now it's charging slower. Make this even higher. Now it's taking forever to charge up. Okay, cool. So instead of just changing, swapping out this resistor, we can put our variable resistor in here. So now we have some variable resistance from here to here, and then just some set resistance. So when this goes all the way to one side, it's not zero. Um, and then as we adjust this, adjust it all the way, now you get really fast charge times. And then you increase the resistance, you get really slow charge times. So this is what our circuit looks like, minus that. Um, that's gonna be our Arduino is gonna do that. Um, and that's what this is gonna look, up, look like here. So we have our five volts going to our potentiometer to one side and then the center tap. Um, Five volts goes to well okay it doesn't matter the center tap and then the other side so it doesn't it's a resistor it doesn't matter which way it's facing uh, then we're going to go through a resistor here and that's going to go into this capacitor here we're going to be reading this voltage here with our digital pin um, with the breadboard all these connected and then our oscilloscope is just going to show the voltage over time so we can see what's actually happening um, all right, and here's our variable resistor. Uh, here's some code. And how this works is, um, well, here, let me run it first just to show you what's working. You already saw this if you saw the first part of the video. Okay, cool. So now this is working out. We're getting from uh, readout from zero all the way to 100, and we're just using a single digital pin. Um, you did have to buy a capacitor, but that's fine. It's <laughs> if you have more than what, six analog inputs in your project, which I do right now. Um, this is a, a nice little hack. So 
Um, we can talk about the limitations of this uh, if I remember at the end. But how does the code work? Okay. First, <laughs> we'll talk about the digital pins. On an Arduino, a digital pin can read a voltage if it's high or if it's low, and it can write a voltage high or low. So, what we're go <laughs> when you're when you're writing a voltage, you're basically telling that pin to go to that voltage. So you're just driving it at that voltage. You're you're um, pushing some electrons or pulling some electrons to actually get that voltage there. On the input, uh, if you're reading the, the the pin instead of writing to the pin, then you don't want to disturb that voltage. So uh, it's not going to write, it's not going to push any or pull any electrons, it's not going to, it's just going to sit there and it's going to read that voltage. Um, not exactly, but uh, you know, we, we don't need to talk about every little thing. In all intents and purposes, especially for this code, it's fine. Um, okay, so here's what we do. Um, first we set the pin mode of pin 2 to an output and we write it low. So that is what that switch is doing by basically shorting out this capacitor, it's telling this voltage to be zero volts, uh, which is what we were doing with that switch before. So, cool, pin two, zero volts. Then this is just gonna tell us that we can print out something, so never mind about that. Um, this loop, uh, first we're gonna declare a variable, an unsigned long, because I want a lot of digits, I don't want it to wrap around or, or do anything crazy. So unsigned long, um, start time. Start time, uh, we're going to set to micros. This function is just going to print out how many microseconds have passed since the program has started. So it's just going to keep ticking up and up and up and up, um, which is really useful for Arduino projects. There's also millis, which will count the milliseconds. Um, but for for uh, if, you're, if you have a lot of things and you want to keep reading it at a really high frequency, then um, micros is, is better. Because um, you can go a thousand times faster or 250 times faster because it's a resolution of four microseconds. But anyway, um, okay, start time. Then we set the pin mode of pin two as an input. So we're basically releasing that voltage. So now that capacitor is free to charge up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to keep reading that pin. While that pin is low, just keep on reading it until it's high. <laughs> Once it's high, Declare another variable called stop time because we've just stopped. Um, set it to micros, same function because it's it's ticked ahead. So now it's actually going to return a higher number, which is how many microseconds from from here to there. Then math the duration is equal to the stop time minus the start time. So that'll just tell you how many microseconds have passed um, from the stop from the start to the stop. Uh, then. Um, I, I, uh, this isn't necessary, but um, the number of microseconds I've read as a minimum of 15,028 and a maximum of 44,936. And I'm just using the map function to turn that into uh, 100 to zero. So if I have this many microseconds, it'll read 100. If I have this many microseconds, it'll read a zero. If it's anywhere in between, it'll do anywhere in between. And then we print it out. So. Um, oh, and then we set that pin mode 2 as an output again, and it's still set to go low, so when we set it to an output, it'll drive it low. So if we look here, we're driving it low, then we release it. This is when we do, when we, uh, do our first um, variable start time and see how many microseconds have passed in the, in the past since we started up, um, whatever 4 minutes and 50 seconds in microseconds is. Um, so. We set our start time, and then we wait and wait and wait until this reads high. The threshold of low to high, uh, you can read the data sheet. This is why it's not a great method, because it can vary from pin to pin and from part to part. So uh, this isn't like an absolute um, method for, for analog reading in, in any way. So, um, But it's good for like relative things, <laughs> um, as long as you don't change any of these parameters. So. Um, okay, yeah, so you're holding it down, then you release it, you get your start time, and then when it reads high, you get your stop time, 
and then uh, you do some calculations, uh, duration, then you map it, and then you print it, and then you set pin 2 as an output, which is just going to bring it low again and get us ready for the next cycle. If you're trying to do this at a really, really high frequency, like your microseconds are maybe 400 or 100, then the time it takes to discharge might become an issue. Um, which is why, well, I mean, you can you can move this code a little higher up and then you'll have an extra, I don't know, like 30, 50 microseconds of discharging. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or you can just have a little delay in there so that way it doesn't pop up um, again really fast. Uh, so this is a delaying 100 milliseconds and then once 100 milliseconds is up, it's going to go up and do it again. So plenty of time to discharge. Um, so cool. Check this out. Crank it down. We get a, a, a long uh, time, which is going to print out uh, 44. I guess, I guess I could print it out too. But okay, you know what? Why not? We'll print it out. Stop the simulation. Start the simulation. All right. So now it's printing out how many microseconds. So from here to here, it's currently 44,936. And then you crank it all the way up. Now it's charging faster. So it's going to be less time from here to here. Now this is 15,000 microseconds. Um, just because I don't like these numbers, I want to know position from 0 to 100 because uh, that's nicer. I can put that back in. Start the sim. 100. 0. 100. <laughs> 0. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you can um, go higher frequency. Read it again. Read it faster. Yeah, so now it doesn't have any time to, to well, I guess it has a little bit of time. Okay, but anyway, um, I digress. This is what happens, uh, this is what, what you can do if you have a variable resistor as your sensor, or like a, poten a potentiometer, and you don't mind purchasing a capacitor, or you have a capacitor. Um, you can get those uh, capacitor kits online that have like 10 of every uh, capacitance, which is really convenient, and you r rarely run out of uh, capacitors. Um, yeah, and then you have this resistor here. Um, the reason we have this resistor here is because if we crank this all the way to one side, we get zero ohms of resistance, which means we just have five volts shorting to the capacitor, and pin two isn't strong enough to <laughs> to, to override the thing that is powering it. So, um, yeah, through through the chip. This 5 volts uh, is a supply for the thing, and then the thing is um, using that 5 volts to, to drive all these pins to whatever you want them to be or to read the pins. So, um, yeah, pins, pin 2 is not that strong. So we have this extra resistance, so when this goes all the way to zero, we still have some resistance. So this can overpower um, the amount of current that can flow through this resistor. But anyway, um, yeah, hope that was enlightening. Um, here's... Yeah, I'll, I'll try to put the code in the description. Yeah. All right, have a good day.